Hi guys. Um, good day. It's yet another opportunity to to learn together. So today we'll be looking at um, module three, and I hope your experience so far has been worthwhile. And then um, the topic before us is project identification and then um, PPP screening. And then um, this is just on the back of project and um, PPP frameworks. Yeah. Um, so 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 let's let's get along. Happy learning. Um, so we would be looking at these following sub issues, defining defini defining and identifying the objectives of um, project identification and screening. That's definition of objectives. Steps in PPP screening. Um, project prioritization, cost benefit analysis, primer and sequence, and uh, the screening reports. Um, yeah, so project identification and screening are pre-assessment processes. A project undergoes before being considered as a potential PPP that should even go through other procedures like project appraisal and all of those. Project appraisal is more committing. You tell the analysis and all of those. And, and um, before the government or the procuring party really commits to investing time, they want to even do a costly assessment that, okay, by the focus of this project, does it really align? Based on that, they will do a quick screening and sifting. sifting. So if they, they, they put out a call for paper, call for, sorry, call for paper, and if they put out a call for proposal and they receive like a 300 entry within the deadline stipulated, necessarily it would be um, so much of energy dissipation looking at those three um, 300 entries in the light of full PPP appraisal. And yeah, you might want to use the principles of project identification and screening as a pre-assessment to really sift and know these ones, they really don't measure up. And you can always assess that through the, the way a PPP identification process and screening process is, then when you do that, you realize that maybe 100 of these entries really measure up to, to the pre-assessment condition. So you want to proceed with those 100 and really subject them to the fuller appraisal, appraisal, um, appraisal, uh, appraisal approaches, um, cost-benefit analysis and all in a deeper way. So, so this, this is, um, something embedded in the PPP framework, and it's a good to know for everyone who has chosen interest in the course. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, project identification is a critical step in the process. This is where everything begins. And then um, proper project identification and screening helps to ensure that those resources are well spent. You use the likelihood of failure, you know, if you want to enter into PPP appraisals, which is also a stage in the selection, it's more resources from the government. They will hire more experts, legal, environmental, technical, to assess different components, you know, economic, financial, when it comes to assessing the financial model, the value for money proposition. Before you get into that point, yeah, more resources and commitment or energy is being dissipated to assess or appraise the project. You want to be sure that you screened and the project you are committing those level of efforts to deserve that kind of attention. And it's not an ad hoc process. It's not someone just sitting over a cup of tea and randomly saying, no, this is not, a, this is not good, this is not good. No, there are ways to go about it so that it will be fair and justifiable that there is a basis for whatever decision is taking at the screening process. Um, we'll look at that. Um, 
Therefore, government must carefully choose the projects and which are included in the PPP pipeline and developed to feasibility level. Yeah. Um, the following are key aspects as we considered in identification and screening process. That's why we said it's not adequate. Does the project have sufficient economic merit to, to, to proceed? And that, that even in the project summary and all of those, you would see their value for money case. Does it align with what we've set out to achieve? Is there avoidance of risk? And oftentimes it's not a one person assessment. It would be different, different, different persons in the public sector. Oftentimes it's not one or two, it's like three, four, so or more, so that there will be a consensus. Everyone rates the projects that came in to really pass a judgment that what's the aggregate rating and how do we place this? Yeah. And so there, and that also reduces the chances of, of bribery and all where there are many independent members of the government or representatives of the government, maybe from different agencies, maybe a Ministry of Finance officer, a Bureau of Public Enterprise is doing something. Uh, and so by the time they all aggregate their judgments based on a rating scale, they have to come up with the preferred uh, maybe 100 out of the 300 entry. And so it can't be like someone was influenced, someone was biased, or they, they put over the old assessors and all of those. Um, is there avoidance of risk for sinking resources into the, into the project analysis and structuring of a non-feasible um, PPP project. So this screening helps to avoid the risk of going into the appraisal where more resources have been sunk to really judge the adequacy of this project. So you don't want to sink um, resources into something that is really outrightly non-feasible from even inception of an issue. Is the project well prepared and can, and can be can it be considered or subjected to the next phase that the appraiser does the, and you want to just quickly look, all the um, annexes, did they include the value for money analysis, the feasibility, the economic um, and feasibility, or did they include the environmental and, and technical feasibility and all of those in the annexes? And then did they, did they put in, submitting their, and, and financial, public financial compliance, what are that in terms of maybe the conditions that have been step, set out in the, in the calls for application. You know, you want to put those all into context. Once they, are, they all meet up, they are set for the next stage. Yeah, so, so you reduce the amount of energy you dissipate and not so what the entries. And does the government want the asset to be financed or or, and or build and or manage during a period of time by the private partner. So once the government is clear about the model they want to use, they want to look at these people really thinking in line. I did not. Sometimes there might be basis to not key into that, but the justification is it strong enough to get our attention? Okay, so so they want to be sure. Okay, we can get, let this pass to the next stage. Does the government want to assess new technologies and services absent loca locally through, through a PPP? If it's that, is this is this entry really giving us a, a, a business case or really really making a case that there is a lot of thinking and innovation? they are bringing into this uh, different from the status quo. And then are we going to really see the desired outcome from a different light through the entries of this, people, this private partner? And because they have many entries, they'll be able to make such comparison. So these people, they are, they are very creative with what they are saying. And it's very interesting. Let's give it, let's move it to the next stage of our present and all. And 
it's fair. Just like the way it happens is, you know, it debates. Um, there are several members of the panel of judges, so it's not going to be an ad hoc judgment that this person is the winner or a loser. That everyone would pass their assessments and the whole professionals in their rights. And oftentimes they still bring third party external assessors to just randomly pass independent judgments to it. And by the time they aggregate the rankings and ratings according to however they subject that, they now be able to come up with an aggregate and say that this had a top 100 that met up with our conditions and, all, and we are moving them to the next phase. So that's that. Um, so steps in screening, identify priority projects, select projects, screen as PPP, um, structure PPP, appraise PPP, and all of those, the, 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 the later we go, the, the, the more, the more, the more um, structured and rigorous it is. So you see towards the end, it leads to appraisal. And appraisal is a more committing process. Um, so, 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 so at the point of identifying the projects, some projects will fall off the table. They will exit the process. And maybe they didn't measure up to basic expectations. Uh, screening, screen project project. Even at that, those that move on, they might, in the process of selecting, you might realize that these are good ideas, but they are not good for PPP. And the government might want to have some other conversations with them of PPP. It's not impossible, but that is also what goes into this process. Then those that scale through, maybe move to appraisals, appraisals, and then that's where more commercial conversations are expected. And then it's competitive. Steps in PPP screen. We've just reached that from the diagram above. You can just pay attention to these readings and then uh, appreciate them closely. Um, technical scoping um, as, a, as one of the steps, we would also want to be sure, even on a cost free economic sense or technical sense, does this really, does this really connect? Like, like a project that wants to maybe do a land consuming exercise in, in, in maybe a congested area, that's not feasible. So have they subjected the demography and all the dynamics? So then you see that you want to be sure they didn't meet up with technical scoping of all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. so it means are they going to be displ displacing people? Do they have insurance cover to make sure they compensate? Because when a PPP is consummated, the responsibility, depending on how it's structured, is like oftentimes the pr private parties, private parties obligation. Yeah. And so is this what the government wants to stick itself into? It's a private party. Does it have hazards for the people? And um, does it even speak well politically for the government of the day? So you want to be sure. And so you, the private party wants to subject its technical scopings adequately to what would be accepted, even at the pre-assessment stage, which is the identification and screening. Um, because it might have many more viable stops, but once it falls out of pre-assessment stage, it's not having the opportunity to be subject to more critical judgment. And so you must just fall in line. Preliminary economic analysis. Yeah, at this stage too, they, they, they want to look at, oh, did this person consider taking into, taking in a cost benefit analysis, cost effectiveness analysis and all of those, even if, it's not at this very stage, they might want to exactly assess what is it saying within this cost benefit analysis. So they might also care too, but at this stage, you want to be sure this whole entry that you are putting in, did the person have a session for cost benefit analysis? Once well, they can see that, okay, we'll subject it to the next stage, appraisal. Yeah, maybe dedicated experts for each of these components would really critically 
and subject to more judgment. And so that's it. Um, CBA is the most appropriate technique for economic feasibility assessment, while an um, economic net present value and economic internal rate of returns are main performance indicators um, in economic analysis. So just want to, like now I can get the financial statement and quickly run, I run through this. Did they look at so so so? Did they conduct a DuPont analysis? Did they do this and that? Once I just see what I need to see, not because I have paid due attention to the depth of information, I can be sure this is good for my attention. Oh, this one did the neglected relevant components. Okay, we can keep this aside. It's not going to move to the next stage. That is where screening happens. And so, um, preliminary financial analysis. PPP suitability analysis, all of those goes on. Um, um, project prioritization. And so it's also here the, the project prioritization enables the government to choose the right alternatives when they are numerous economically and technically feasible projects. So 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 at some point they also now start prioritizing, okay. All these entries are making sense. Which one do we prioritize over which? We are having, they, they are all trying to meet up with expectations, but some 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 entries are cheaper while they all met with the random expectation. Government will not shoot itself at the foot trying to please you. They want to be sure you are pleasing them rather. So your entries might be. So that's why the PPP projects are not the time you think you exploit the economy. You just want to put your best foot forward to make a good case for the value you want to offer. And yes, you still justify how you make your profit and it's really profitable. So either party are not trying to reach on to each other. So in a very transparent process, and may I raise this caveat because we are all, I believe we should be all patriotic Africans. It's good we are ethical so that we would help the masses through this. And I see sometimes um, by virtue of my responsibilities and um, duties, not just within my immediate home country, I see you put out a call for PPP applications and then or call for entries and you see interested parties submit submit fiscal copies of blah 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 to the social social office by social deadline it's not globally it's not a good practice there's internet, there's there's a way allow for online submissions because if, if, if a very competent player is in the history of a country he has to maybe travel to your capital, maybe that is in the West. And then um, what's that? It's not efficient. Um, so by that, you are even precluding some players or you, 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 you don't advertise on time on your website. You put up, you would have some organizations or some government personnel that put, would have had the call for entry for so long. They only print on posters and put on the signboard of the office, maybe downstairs. And so towards the end, like a week, they not put the in press release, but they will justify that it has been released as a poster somewhere downstairs. We, how many people see that poster? So you want to be sure there are no manipulative, non-transparent approaches. So, when many people don't see the poster, you might have vested interest in having the person that should send an entry. And that is not necessary. That does not make for competition and quality, you know? Um, so so those, those are key. Or sometimes the website is not responsive. You see the advert, you want to click the link to submit and do other things. And everything is saying web not accessible or something, something. And the, the, the interested parties are helpless. They can't, they can't do anything. And so the time passes and they are just not, uh, shut out of the prospect of giving value to the country. And um, so, so, so we need to, we need to take into consideration. I think this course will be put into ethics. We'll be talking to ourselves about the morality of doing the right things. 
why we are talking about what should be done. Um, yeah, so 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 that's that. Um, prioritize project prioritization and all of those. Um, yeah, we provided a link to um, more some helpful resources to delve some more deeper into appreciating what project prioritization really relates to. Mind you, PVP are largely used for infrastructure work. So oftentimes you will see PPP conversations over and around infrastructure, but it's not it's not till closed to infrastructure alone, as I've earlier established in previous models. It's for services, it's cross sectoral. You can always think in innovatively and out of the box as it applies to your context. Once you understand the framework, once you understand the procedures, and then participating the good prospects it holds for everyone. Um, and so options analysis is part of what you subject in a PVP app. A prioritization process. You want to be sure who oh, they put out their cost benefit analysis, their economic cost effectiveness analysis, multi criteria assessment, and you want to just check those up. You know, this identification and screening is a pre assessment. There will still be a time for full assessment, but in the pre assessment, you want to be sure that what you need to really assess in the full assessment that's appraisals and other stages are really at present so that's why we are looking at all this we would appreciate them in more details the subsequent models um yeah, cost benefit analysis primer you want to ask various information that are required to properly conduct a cost benefit analysis the checklist below includes some of the necessary elements of a cost benefit analysis one the name and positions of the proponent, person in charge, department, and all of those. They are critical. Preliminary project description, sector, technical features. You know, they want to be able to see those, and they are very peripheral, yes, but they can make a good case at the project identification. So you might have all the lovely things you've written in the bigger context of your submission. But if these are not there for a cost reassessment and the extension, you, you are locking yourself out of the prospects that you could just be the best candidate to. And, and cost estimates, you want to put that out the capex because the government is interested in it. They want to see what it costs them because PPP was meant to reduce the financial risk and burden, but they want to be able to see that. Does this really help us? Should we proceed with this conversation? Is this outrageous? Is this sensible? Um, considerations of whether and to what extent user fee can be charged for the project. And then and descriptions of the need being fulfilled by the project, main economic impact factor and all of this. And it, it is best where PPP players really, really, really invest in making a good case. Um, so yeah, other con con considerations in the PPP primer, they want to see, have you put into context assessment of willingness to pay by the player, by the locals or by the stakeholders who will be beneficiaries of the project? Particularly now that you know the topic really speaks to the dear realities of the COVID and its economic impact, government don't have so much money to anticipate. In fact, now they are still spending so much on combating the virus. So as a trade-off, infrastructure works are impacted. They don't have so much to put into infrastructure works across sector. Hospitals, yeah, maybe because hospital is the major um, sector now, more money are going there to ensure adequate care. But it means a trade of sports and entertainment might be suffering. Um, think about other sectors, tourism actually is suffering now, no travels and all of those. So if you really want to, if the government really wants to make a kill from PPPs, You'll be sure that they are not really thinking government PPPs because they are trying to not pay anything at the moment. So it might be user P that makes more sense, more economic proposition. I'm not saying that is totally what it is, but you want to understand the times, you want to really understand 
what is the best solution? How do I weave this around the problems that needs to be addressed? Um, the fair economically viable projects assess viability gaps, the difference between revenue and costs. Government wants to see all of those and you can be sure that putting all this in context, um, paying attention to this sequence of cost benefit analysis, all of those would help. Um, that's that would would we indeed like a picture of what a typical screening report can be and then and you can appreciate that more here they not end up with the judgment of a yes or no 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 um and that's why i told you it's not hard hoc it's not hard hoc at all see where they pass their scores and different assessors will pass their scores and they advocate um so screening ppp infrastructure development projects and the republic of philippines we chose to pull this out okay to appreciate that oh this is how philippine does it look at this parallel to what obtains in your client you can also go to the discussion board share more information let there be a cross fertilization of perspectives as it obtains very and then we all learn from one another um so thank you guys um i hope you are getting along and understanding this in deeper and clearer context and um, we are open to questions comments suggestions on the discussion board participants are encouraged to kindly post their questions and comment do that do that you can also help other colleagues if you if you think you understand what they are asking and you can relate to it from your experience we want to learn from each other you know and um, so so thank you once again see you in the next module bye